He cautiously continued down the corridor, keeping an eye out for anything unusual. Stay alert, it's been too long since anything has happened. I prefer this to the ghost girl snatching one of us. So would I, but in a movie this would be the point where something terrible would happen to catch us off guard. The count stopped abruptly. Please, tell me I'm imagining that. I stopped as well and that's when I noticed it. The ground was shaking slightly. It's not your imagination. I, I see. Let's keep moving then. Despite his words, he didn't move. Are you okay? Fine. Fine, perfectly fine. Why would you even ask? He showed me a shaky smile. I narrowed my eyes at him. I thought we said you would never like me. I'm still standing, aren't I? I must just be feeling a bit nauseous. The smell and blood must be catching up to me. Don't do that. Don't pretend that you're okay when you're obviously not. I don't see why it should matter to you anyway. It matters to me because I care about you. Not nearly enough to take a chance on me. I felt a stab of pain in my heart and hung my head. He cursed under his breath. I'm sorry, I... I shouldn't have said that. I didn't mean it. I threw my eyes to the side, not wanting him to see my face. He brought our clasped hands to his chest. Can you feel my heart? The only reason it's so calm right now is because you're the one with So please, believe me when I say that I never want to do anything that will hurt you. I look up at him and I felt my cheeks heat up. I tried to pull my hand away, but the count kept his claps around mine. Come on, we should get going. It doesn't look like these tremors are stopping anytime soon. We start walking again, this time much faster than before. The shaking seemed to intensify as well until we needed to lean against the walls just to stay upright. We ran at another corner just in time to see the floor crumble away. We pulled to an abrupt stop. Earthquakes, crumbling floors, this just keeps getting better and better, doesn't it? It could... I cut myself off when I noticed a figure on the other side of the chasm. The count turned to see the girl and let out a sigh. Of course! Once again, the sinking started up. The girl pointed to us and started muffing something. Is she taunting us? I would say she's trying to get us to cross the chasm. After a moment, the shaking stopped and we could finally move away from the wall. We need to find something that can get us to the other side. There is a metal bar across the ceiling in the middle of the room. All we need to do is hook a rope or something to that we can probably swing across. A rope? Wasn't there a rope in the room where Mr. Bandages disappeared? I believe so. Then we should have grabbed it while we were there. I guess we need to backtrack. At least the tremor stopped. Yeah, let's make a run for it then. The quicker I get this over, the better. Right. We ran back to the room as quickly as we could. The can't pick up the rope before looking around for a moment. Do you see any hooks around? It would certainly make it easier. I point to some devices suspended from the ceiling. Those look like carbiners hooks holding those things up. Perfect. Now we just need to find a way to get them down. Are you sure? You are wearing a skirt after all. I would over to boost you, but I don't think I could leave you high enough. Besides, it's not like you have to look. Close your eyes or look away. Point taken. The cow bent down and hesitantly put his arm around my thighs before lifting me up while pointedly looking away. I reached for the nearest carbiner. Shoot, it's a little out of my reach. Move a little to the left. A little more. Perfect. I quickly grabbed the carabiner. Got it! He lowered me back to the ground but didn't remove his arms from around me as he straight Count? He looked deeply into my eyes for a moment. Then he shook his head as though coming out from a trance. He took a step back, letting his arms fall to his sides before reaching out lacing his fingers with mine. Sorry, we should get this done quickly. Right, here, you can attach this to the rope and we can get out of here. 
I handed him the carabiner and watched him secure the rope to it. We ran back to the room with the chasm. So, how good is your eye? I want to say good, but it's really terrible. I fail at festival games. Don't let me do it. He handed me the robe and I gave him the dose in return. I let go of his hand and put some distance between us to give me space. My first sudden glance of the beam and fell into the hole. I quickly pulled the robe back out. I didn't hear it hit the bottom. I wonder just how deep the hole really is. Hopefully, we won't have to find out. Indeed. I tried again. Yes! I managed to hook the carpenter to the rod. I tugged a few times to check how secure and sturdy it was. Looks like it will hold. Shall we swing across together? No, the rod seems sturdy, but I'd rather not risk it. One at a time is safer. Alright. He reached for the robe, but I held it away. Ladies first. That doesn't apply to dangerous situations. What kind of man just allows a woman to throw herself into danger? Hey, that's sexist, you know? Don't use words only when it suits your benefit. I'm lighter, you look like you've been eating too many sweets at that bakery. If you let me take over my jumper when I offer, you would have seen that I'm still in peak physical condition. I already knew that from when I was pressed against you the last time. His eyes widened my unexpected response and I used the opportunity to take a running leap across the chance before he could stop me. As I sailed through the air, the lights started flickering again. Shit! The moment my feet hit the ground on the other side, I went around to find the count, only to have my fears realize he was gone. I could just make out a lamb on the other side of a chasm. Another doll? The last ones had clues, so I should probably get this one too. I swung back to the other side. Just as I thought, there was a doll of a car resting on top of the other two dolls. Carrying all three dolls like this would be really inconvenient. Oh, I know. I quickly emptied my quiver and shoved the Mr. Bandages and Mr. Wolf dolls into it. Then I hastily grabbed the candle and swung back to the other side. I turned the doll over, looking for the clue. It didn't take me long to find a folded up note sticking out from under his waistcoat. I quickly pulled it free and unfolded it to find a different message from last time. Mine. He's not yours. The lie seemed to deem a response to my word. Time to get out of here. 